Welcome to St. Joseph Radio Presents. We got a, we got a, we have, I'll do it again. Welcome to St. Joseph Radio Presents. Our program today is How to Cure Blindness. I think we're going to do it. Deacon? Oh, yes. There's no doubt that blindness can be cured. And that's not just the blindness, the physical blindness that some people have, right? Right. We're talking about a deeper blindness, the blindness that we have in our hearts. And blindness can be cured because we can see with the eyes of Jesus. And Jesus can show us the way, the truth, and the life. So blindness is something that, that we can get rid of, and we have some great ways to do it that the Lord has already shown us. And today we're going to explore how to do that. We're not just whistling Dixie. We're going to get to the point. We're going to get to the how to cure blindness. Stay tuned. Well, thank you, Matt. And I am your host today. I'm uh, Peter Karutz. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents, coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. We are here live in studio, as promised, with Deacon Tom Burke. Deacon, welcome. Good morning. And or the, afternoon, I don't know which. It, uh, it'll be afternoon. Okay. It is afternoon. And it's live. We just crossed over, so okay. it is afternoon. So welcome to everybody. Uh, today's program uh, is a very attainable goal, the name of the program. It's attainable. You know, you've heard of SMART rules. The A is for attainable, right? So the name of our program is How to Cure Blindness. W- what did you say? I said How to Cure Blindness. Uh, uh, is that good? That's Deacon? good. And it's actually our, our little Father's Day, Day gift. There okay? you go. And, uh, for those fathers out there who, are, who have their head down, their shoulder to the grind, they're pushing, that, pushing against the locomotive of, of debt and worry and concern, we have something for you because I know your eyes are closed. I know you're, you're gritting your teeth. I know what that's like. And so today we have How to Cure Blindness, which will allow you to, to take your your shoulder off the plow. There we go. And so that we keep, uh, as a good friend of mine, Deacon, not Deacon, but Father Augustine Weta, he says, the Benedictines say, you'd start no good work before you put it to prayer. So since you have the collar on in here, would you mind starting us off with a prayer? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good and gracious God, the God of our, of our breath, the God of our life, the God who sent us Jesus, the God who sent us Jesus in, the, in his body and blood, the Corpus Christi, the God who gave us the Holy Spirit and, and the love between the Father and the Son, we ask for that same Spirit today. Send out your Spirit. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds so that we can experience a greater love and presence of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. So first off, the word blindness could sometimes just be glossed over, but but it, it is profound physically and spiritually. When, when I was 16, uh, I went to the eye doctor, and he says, I can't, I can't correct your vision. You need to go to a specialist. So I go to a specialist. And, and let me just say, we were in difficult circumstances in my life at that time. We, we, we were poor. <laughs> you know, there's the word. And um, the doc, I came home, and I told my mom, well, the doctor said that I have to have contacts. Contacts were extraordinarily expensive. We didn't have insurance. And she was a little upset with me, to be perfectly honest. She says, there's a 16-year-old who apparently has the vanity to come home you know, and say he needs to have glasses. So the doctor actually, after my mom gave me a little talking to, the doctor actually called and said, he, Peter has something called keratoconus. And we, uh, you know, likely by the time he's 30, he'll have to have transplants. And uh, our goal is that he doesn't go blind. I'm telling you, it hits you like a ton of bricks. Wow. Even the contemplation of blindness. And, and it hit my mom like a ton of bricks, right? Her son may go blind. So blindness is not only something that we, we talk about kind of uh, uh, esoterically in the Bible. And, and, but blindness is a profound physical change in one's life. And it's also a profound physical change in one's spiritual life, too. Obviously, I didn't go blind, thank God, for with, yeah, with all, of, God. all the uh, technology that has, has progressed. But we're going to be talking about how to cure blindness and I'm going to talk about a special kind of blindness, yeah. too. You know, that, that blindness that we have when it's hard for us to lift our head. The blindness we have when it's difficult to see past our own predicaments in the world. And that blindness c- 
can be it can slowly invade our lives. I know what that's like. I mean, when 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 it's just that next project or that next thing we have to do at work, or or we have to get our child past this stage in their life. It could be could be adolescence. It could be uh, into adulthood. I'm just trying to push against the goad, so to speak, as much as I can, and that causes us to to grimace and to close our eyes and to become smaller than who God intended us to be. So today, let's talk about the three ways that, that God wants us to be cured of our blindness. And, and those fall into three main categories, and they really bleed over into each other, but let's just talk about it this way. We have hindsight. Hindsight's a, a, the, the platform in which we cure blindness. Insight, and then we have foresight. Hindsight, insight, and foresight. Got it. And, and you know that, uh, I, I think it was Socrates said something about examining your life. What, do you recall what that was? Uh, right. What, what the unexamined life is not worth living. Yeah. And, and, and if, if you're out there living right now and you say, well, thank you very little because I don't examine my life very much. So you've just told me my life's not worth living. I'd like you to think about it for, for a minute to say what Socrates is talking about is existing. And believe me, we, we all have existed. When we suffer a trauma, after that trauma, it's hard to have a full blooming life. You're just, you're just existing. You're just getting through it. Sometimes the weight of a career change or just trying to get by in this economy is, causes us to want to exist. And let me tell you, my definition of existing is life without reflection, life without purpose, life without a mission, which really means life without connection. So... That reflection allows us to, to, to look at who we are and what's gone on in our life, to look at the events that have happened in the past and decide, and decide where did I, where, the event happened to me, but where was God in that? Where did I fit in with God in that? So yeah, I looked up the definition of hindsight just mm. to give us some context. Hindsight is understanding of events and meaning after they have happened. So, so many times that, the devil turns to us and says, oh, yeah, I want you to think back of what happened. I want you to think back about everything you've failed to do. I want you to think back about every time you hurt somebody else. I want you to think about every time that you failed. So I can invade your life and tell you how unloved you are, how unworthy of love you are, and how unimportant you are. And that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a reflection, a hindsight into the great gifts we've received from God. So let me ask you, how often do you sit around, Peter, and think about, you know, I'm just going to count my blessings? Um, rarely. <laughs> I don't, I don't not, not often, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. And let me tell you that that's a gateway. That's a great gateway into reflection. So I'm not talking about anything deep. I must admit to you I'm not a very deep person. I'm just trying to, trying to get by and be with Jesus. So to get by and be with Jesus, to me, it means I'm going to sit down and count my blessings. Many years ago, uh, I've been a deacon for six years now. Uh, many years ago, uh, before I even entered diaconate, I sat down in the Adoration Chapel, which, by the way, is a great place to be oh, if you yeah. want to do any type of reflection. But having said that, I get a bed at home. And I said, I want to count all my blessings, all the way God has helped and been influencing in my life. So I was reflecting, wasn't it? I, I didn't really set out to do it. I just said, I'm going to start counting my blessings. And uh, it was late in the afternoon. It was a very quiet place. And uh, I, I must admit, I dozed off for about 10 minutes. Uh, my wife was with me, and she nudged me and said, snoring is not adoring. <laughs> But in the 50 minutes, in the 50 minutes that I started praising God and blessing the blessings I received in my folks and their folks before that who'd come to America and their folks before that had come from Ireland and come from Germany. And I, I gave blessings for their, how they strove to, to have their faith. And then to get more personal, I started out with my birth and my birth is a twin with my brother. And then mm -hmm. I kept going. And I even, I even said, well, I guess I have to do a blessings for the bad stuff that happened too because right. on every one of them I could see. I could see for the first time how God had been there with me. And at the end of the hour, remember I just took a break for 10 minutes. At the end of the hour, I was 16 years old. I had not passed, been past, really? past the age of 16. Oh, wow. So that has opened my mind. That opened my heart. That opened my heart to see where God had acted in my life. And isn't it true? I mean, think about the times when, when you've had something bad and 
happened to you, and I don't really want to get, get into that today if you don't want to, but think about what happened when you were wounded, when somebody told you you were not important, when, some, when something even exterior happened to you, a loss of a job or a loved one, for heaven's sakes, not even close to a loss of a job. Isn't the first thing we think of is we're the only one? The devil comes to us and says, you're, you're, you're the, you're, you deserve that. Yeah. Uh, you, you could have been a better person and that wouldn't have happened. And even some of us, unfortunately, have uh, carry guilt of saying, yeah, I, I might have been able to prevent something happening. And that carries us uh, through our lives and affects how we look at our life. But if you look at your life through hindsight, but not through the blessings, it's a whole other thing. Yeah. What, do you th- what do you think that would do with you? Well, uh, hindsight, I... I I think, and I haven't thought about it through the blessings, but maybe I've thought about it through the bad things. You know, I know Paul says we should give thanks to God in all things, and all things mean good things and bad things. And um, I I remember um, Fulton Sheen, as he's passed the hospital, he says, look at all the wasted suffering in there. And, you know, it's tough to tell people who are in the midst of their suffering that it has meaning. You know, John, John Paul the second, 82-ish, I think, he, he wrote uh, Solvific Dolores on human suffering. And, and his first, um, one of the first verses in there were, was uh, Colossians 124. And, it, you know, it's, it, Paul says, I, I rejoice in the suffering of my body because it make up, for you, the church, because it makes up what's lacking in Christ. So I, I haven't reflected on blessings, but I tend to, I have reflected, rightly or wrongly, very much on the bad things and trying to bring it to mind that God has a reason for these bad things, and God doesn't make bad, he only makes good. So whatever I'm perceiving as bad, God has in his plan. Well, over and over again, um, uh, I can relate to stories uh, where I listened to what God had to say and I did something that was absolutely ridiculous, uh, was preposterous, was not part of my plan. But I said, you know, because I recognize how active God has been in my life through the blessings and the gifts that I received, that allowed me to take that extra step and say yes to that. Uh, what, I, what I'm really getting at here is, is I'm thinking about all the ways that God's forbearance in my life did not punish me for my sins. Uh. God's mercy and forgiveness in my life didn't, it, it was so apparent particularly in the sacrament of reconciliation, but in uh, so many other ways. It was so apparent that he wanted goodness for me all the days of my life. In fact, most of the badness in my life was my badness uh, and, and, and exterior things, not God. And so that causes me to have a great, have a great trust in God. So then out of, this, out of this hindsight, then I start becoming aware of, of who God is to me and how active he is in my life. Out of that hindsight of the gifts that I've received, I start saying, what a gift. What a gift this was today. What a gift, what a gift my spouse is to me. Uh, I, I, I really need to talk my spouse into doing this more often because, you know, it's easy for us to go to, I sure wish he would pick up his socks or I sure wish that he would take the garbage out or I... I, I shouldn't go down the list that Gail has for me. Well, it's the same those, list I have, so I, I was going to wonder. Maybe you, you've been what, listening in here. Whatever the list is, though, whatever that list is, isn't it so common for us to go to how someone else doesn't enter into our kingdom? Someone else doesn't do what we want them to do? Someone else has aggravated us? I can tell you all the times when in my legal practice how somebody else purposely tried to aggravate me and my sure. client. Someone else purposely tried to get us off our stride. And, and they weren't demonic or anything like that. But, but what about that great grace that comes to us? When we take that gratitude I've been talking about, about the gifts, and we turn it into praise. Yeah. And that's the next thing that gratitude does. Gratitude, the most authentic emotion, because it requires nothing in return, uh. says, ha I will then now give praise. Right. My return in gratitude is praise of God. Yeah. So th- counting your blessings and just praising God. Thank you. Thank it you, is God. A great, yeah. It is a great path yeah. to knowing who God is and who we're not. Yeah. Let me tell you who we are. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, the Rome of the West. We ought to talk about why we're the Rome of the West sometime. I'm your host, Peter Krutz, and we're here live with Deacon Tom Burke, 
And the title of this program is How to Cure Blindness, and we're going to do it. Yeah, and we're going to do it. So we've talked about blindness, right? And the blindness that we, the first blindness we have, and many of us have, is that we don't look at the good. We only look at the bad. We, we only look at our suffering. We only look at how, how our life isn't glorious every day of our life. And if something goes wrong, we think, oh, gee, now all the lights are going to be red. You know, everything's going to go bad today. And yet, if we just stepped back and took a breath, the breath that God gave us, and we said, thank you, Lord, because I can find goodness in almost everything, even in my pain and suffering, as you talk about. But more so, I'm going to do an inventory. I'm going to cure my blindness about who I am to God by doing an inventory of the gifts. And that's one of the first blindness we're trying to cure, and that is who we are to God. So, Deacon, uh, just to, for clarity, counting one's blessings is good because you can see how possibly something bad turned into good? Am I, or is it, is it just count one's blessings just for the purpose of counting the blessings and praise and thank God? Well, obviously, I think one of the ancillary benefits is for us to reflect back and we see where something bad happened, something good came out of it. Yeah. But I'm asking for something that's more than that. Okay? Yeah. I'm asking you to, to do something that's easier than that. I really don't want to go back to all the bad things I've done in my life and see how something comes out of it. I'm sorry, I'm just too shallow for that today. Today, Lord, I'm just going to count my blessings. I'm just going to reflect about on, on what a great time it was, blankety blank in high school or whatever that 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 yeah. first that first kiss yeah. or the first time a coach patted me on the back yeah. or the first time that I that I that I was able to beat my sister in pig <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever that was whatever that was that I'm going to reflect back on that blessing and see where see where God was in that and all of a sudden I've started figuring out wait I, oh I oh lord I was contemplated by you. Yeah. I was protected with, by you in that spot. I was, I was so, so uh, cherished by you, Lord. And, and l- let me ask you, just talking about this, as I'm talking about this, I can think, I feel more cherished just talking about it. Oh, in absolutely. praise of God today, if you're out there listening to this, in praise of God today, Think about how much he did blank for you and realize right. how much you are cherished. When, when, I was, uh, when my children were little, I had to always pick my favorite something, my favorite color. I didn't know I had one. I had to pick one. And, uh, my favorite uh, Winnie the Pooh character, of course, mine was Eeyore. Oh, it's all terrible. It's all, well, maybe that's reflective of me. But what you're saying is reflect on the blessings and create a sense of joy in your heart. That's good. So, so if you if you do that, and you say, "Oh, gee, Deacon Burke, he's talk, <laughs> he's talking Pollyanna stuff. <laughs> he's out there just, uh, you know, he's almost he's almost nauseating because he's so happy about what's going on in his life. Doesn't he walk on a magic carpet or what?" And the answer is no. I choose God. I choose joy. I choose praise. And when I praise God, my joy bucket gets bigger. When I praise God and give him gratitude, my awareness of his presence in my life gets bigger. And then my awareness of other people and how blessed they are gets bigger too. So we're just talking about the first way to, to cure blindness. And, one, and the first platform way is Hindsight. Hindsight. Yeah. But see, now, you've actually gone the, the right way with it when we've been talking about this. I love that about you. You're so intuitive. Because you said, okay, if I'm going to think about all the blessings, then where is it going to bring me to? As I think about who I am with God, where is it going to bring me to? And that's going to bring me to something that we don't talk about much, and that's compunction. Compunction is when we have that humility See, uh, we haven't used the H word today. No. And, and a lot of people don't like the H word because they go, yes, I'm pretty darn humble. I'm so good. I'm so great. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think that word means what you think it means. Right, yeah. right. So, so when we start knowing who God is because of how great he's been in our life and how we want to be partner with him in that, then we start understanding who we are, you know. And humility in a short form is saying how good God is and how right. good I'm not, right? right. But without going, without going going into the dark place of, oh, woe is me. Just the opposite. God must really think 
that I'm something pretty special. And, and if I see how much I can, should be closer to him, that causes me to have compunction. Compunction is a compelling attitude. Now that I see how great he is in my life, I, it's going to compel me forward. Compel me forward even into the darkness that I can't see. Mm -hmm. Compel me forward even into trusting him. You know, St. Augustine talks about that, the great compunction he had. Uh, when, when you uh, read some of his early works where he says, I was, I was, I was in the garden and it came upon me like a storm. How much, how, how much God had been to me and how little I had been to God. It welled up in me like a storm and a rainstorm, and I started crying. Well, now, he didn't stay in the woe is me spot of knowing how great God was, did he? No, because he knew how great God was and how he had, in his great intellect, had not lived up to that gift that he'd received. But then he went out in the next it started at age like 50 and wrote like 55 books after that, okay? Uh, I don't know any of you out there want to write 55 books after, after today, but I'm saying to you, if God wants you to do that, wouldn't it be great if you did? Sure. So, so, so that's where it is with you, Peter, too. You know, it, what, 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 if you entered into this exercise and just thought of all the greatness and not the badness that God has been in your life, it would, it, I will guarantee you, it will bring you to a state of euphoria and praise of God. And from that state, we get the compunction, which is a compelling unction, so to speak, the compunction to go forward with him, not on our own, but with him. So uh, we have examples of that, right? Uh, the examples we have of that is in uh, the Old Testament. If you read the Psalms, David's Psalms over and over again, he's reflecting on how great God is. He's reflecting on how Israel moved away. He's reflecting on the fidelity of God all along. So even though uh, we have that, we, we know that in the Jewish faith, they have the pa Passover, right? Mm -hmm. What happens in the Passover? They make it happen again. It's not a, a, a memory. It's not a history lesson. They have the chairs set there on purpose. They, they do it in a special way to make it happen again. And, of course, I wouldn't be Catholic if I didn't, didn't remind you that we also have that too. Right. We come to Jesus, and it, it happens again at the Mass. So how are we going to sustain this? You know, how do we sustain in our lives this thought of gratitude and praise of God, which is the, which is the first part towards perfection and humility? How do we do that? How, how, what do you think? What would be your path, Peter? How do we sustain it? I don't know. I, I'm, I have to review what you said first. So counting one's blessings is, is, a, is almost naturally humbling. You know, I, you see folks who have had a kindness done to them that they don't deserve, right? Someone yeah. walks up to someone and gives them $100. Uh, they're, 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 they're humbled. And, um, and when you take this inventory of your blessings, you, you realize how much God does love you, and it's, it's not prideful, and that's, it's not instilling pride, but it's instilling humility, right? And, and it tends to be encouraging, too. You said compunction, right? Isn't unction, doesn't that mean an, an anointing? So it, Absolutely. So you're, you're, but as, a, as a result of recognizing how much God loves us so undeservedly, we, we, we don't deserve his love, and how, much, how many blessings he's given us, we, we naturally become humbled by his graciousness, and then he anoints us to move forward mm -hmm. and, and act, not, not humbling, not humble as in sit, sit on the couch and say, oh, wow, well, that's great, but in, uh, encouraging us to, to move forward and act upon his, his, uh, his goodwill, his grace. All right, so, so in, in, in what we've been talking about is the platform for our site being opened is we become aware of ourself in connection with God. So our self-awareness, because of who we come from, which is God, right? Our self-awareness comes from our connection to God. So I'd ask you, uh, we've talked about a connection to God through the Holy Eucharist and the Mass. How else would you suggest to me if I was just walked up to you and said, I'd like to be connected to God, and I've already started praising him. <laughs> I'd always, I've already started counting my blessings. What, what, would, you, what would you say to somebody uh, uh, about how to get more connected to God? I guess I would s recognize what you just said, and I would say clearly God loves you, uh, which is profound. 
And then I would say, I, I think God has a plan for you. You've recognized his grace, and now it's time to strive to understand what his plan is for you. Ah, cool. So you're exactly where we want to go, right? We want to have that insight. You know, uh, we, we, we've gone from hindsight, and now we're going to travel into insight. What does God? What, what does God mean to me? How do I? What's my meaning with God? Where do I find my mission and purpose? You know, now we're getting to more towards insight, and of course, one of the great ways to find insight, uh, which I which which I offer to you as as the as one of the most important prescriptions, aside from the Holy Mass, which we just slightly alluded to, which would be a whole other program. Mm. But having said that, would be the Word of God. Would be Jesus. Jesus. He tells us so much, but he tells us so much about ourselves if we get into Scripture. You know, if we, if we come to Mass on Sunday, and I, I recommend everybody does, of course, if we come to Mass on Sunday and we say, I'm not going to participate, I'm just going to sit here and watch, I'm going to listen to what the story of the Gospel uh, or the Scriptures are, and I'm going to say, that's a nice story. Thank you very much for bringing that to me. And then I go off and do my own merry thing. Then I haven't, I, I'm still blind, aren't I? Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not open to what Jesus wants for me and what God wants for me. And that's what we're talking about, a fuller life. That's what we're talking about, a, a life uh, that's examined and well worth living, which is the opposite of what Socrates said. So let's, let's talk a little bit about insight for a few minutes, okay? okay? From that position of hindsight, and, and from a position of maybe wa uh, listening and reading, uh, we'll come back to that. We got a minute. Okay. Half a minute. Anyway. Half a minute. We're going to come back and talk about the insights that we have that God will show us since we started out knowing who God is and who we're not and how great we are to God. And I suspect we're going to be talking about Scripture, too. You know, one of my favorite preachers is uh, Father Larry Richards, and he has a couple of great sayings. "Is no Bible, no bed, no Bible, no breakfast. Uh, you know, a, a Bible basic instructions before leaving earth or some such thing. Well, we're going to be talking about how to cure blindness, opening our eyes through these three key points. Come and Looking for a way to teach your children about our Catholic faith? Colby Academy has the solution, offering a curriculum that is loyal to the magisterium, classical, Ignatian, flexible, and affordable. Colby can help with all your homeschooling needs. We offer a wide range of services, including live online courses for those looking for assistance teaching their students, recorded self-paced courses for those who want teacher instruction while needing the flexibility to move at their own pace, and traditional homeschool courses for maximum flexibility in home education. Our support Support services include advising for parents, record keeping and transcript services, a grading service, standardized testing, and guidance and college counseling. For more information, check out their website at colby.org. That's K O L B E.org. Or give them a call. Area code 707 255 6499. That's 707 255 6499. It's Colby Academy. St. Joseph Catholic Radio is proud to announce the launch of SJEN-TV, the St. Joseph Evangelization Network. SJEN-TV is a premier online Catholic broadcasting network providing quality Catholic programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We have programming such as live studio interviews, St. Joe's Java speaker presentations, current Catholic issues, and the Pro-Life series. We're featuring the many talented speakers out of Orange County, California, and this Archdiocese of St. Louis, Missouri including Professor John Gresham, Father James Mason, Karen Nokemper, Rick Hollerick, Bill Federer, and many more. To review the program list, go to sjen.tv or on Roku, sjen.tv. All this programming is free, and we are welcoming sponsorship of new programs. Find out more at sjen.tv. Uh, welcome back. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents, coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. I'm your host, Peter Karutz, and we are here with Deacon Tom Burke. And the name of this program is How to Cure Blindness. But before we jump right back into it, remember, we're going to talk about Scripture a little bit and a guide to, so that we can live life to its fullest, because that's what God wants. I'm just going to remind everyone that the Catholic Man of the Year is, com <clears throat> is coming up here on the 26th. If you would like to attend, please call us at 6... 
Oh, I forgot. 636-447-6000. 636-447-6000. And if you would like a copy of this program on CD, please give us a call at that same number. And, you know, we can also be found on the Roku system. That's sjen.tv or the Internet, uh, specifically YouTube. You know, I was told that the most frequently used um, search tool is Google. Not surprising. But the second most frequently used search tool is YouTube. So you can find us on YouTube. Um, anything you would like to know from a faith standpoint, boy, we might have something on there for it. And if you would like a copy of this program, look us up on the Internet in a couple of weeks. We'll have it up there. Or call us directly, and we'll, we'll send you whatever you'd like. Help us out a little bit with the postage. 636-447-6000. Or find us on the web at sj. En.tv. Deacon, we're talking about how to cure blindness. You gave us three pieces of wisdom uh, to how to think about that. Hindsight, insight, foresight. We're on insight, and we are talking, I think, a little bit about Scripture. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, St. Jerome said ignorance of Scripture is in ignorance of Christ. And, right. And uh, you say, well, I don't, I don't have time. I, I, I've got so many, so many things I have to read for work. I've got to help my kids with their homework. I don't have any time to listen to Scripture. I don't have any time to read Scripture. I, I, that's, that's too far out there for me. And, and if you have that going on in your life, then uh, you have a blindness. And, and, and I'm just diagnosing it for you because I've had the same blindness. Yeah. And, and, and that blindness is the world, right? The world wants us to do all these things that we have to do. I mean, I'm not saying we don't have to help our kids and, and do things at work and things. And the world says this is all very important. And, and the only way to regenerize your batteries then is, is you've done all this for today. Now let's go to the Internet. And now let's go play games. Now let's go action movies. Now let's go read a, read a uh, fantasy book. This that'll recharge your batteries. And I will tell you that if you want to walk through life with only half charged batteries, then that's the way to go. If you want to walk through life fully charged, fully alive, fully aware of who you are to God and who God is to you, get into Scripture. Understand that Scripture was written personally for you, Peter. Do you realize that Scripture was written for Peter? That's shocking. I, I've never considered it in that fashion. But it was it, exactly. You yeah. were contemplated from God from the very beginning. From the very beginning of the world, Peter Kurtz was contemplated from, from, by God, and he wanted you to know him. And so he sent his son into the world, and he sent the prophets into the world. He says, I want Peter to know me. And, and did you know, and I'm going to say this to all the other fathers out there and all the other spiritual fathers out there, did you know, just like, Malachi says to Esther, did you know that you were made for a time like this in the kingdom of God? Did you know that you were made for a time like this in the kingdom of God? You can look around and say how terrible life is and how wonder wonderful other people's lives can be, how terrible the economy is or politics or whatever. That's not of God. What God is is that personal relationship you have with him that drives you on with compunction to do his mission and his will. And then if you really want to be fully alive, do you want to be fully alive, Peter? Absolutely. If you want to be fully alive, then you need to live in Christ Jesus. And that's what we've been talking about, awareness of ourself in context of God. And you will find that in the scriptures. You will find that as you take Jesus into yourself at Mass. And, and, and if you want that to come alive, you just have to say, Lord, I want it to come alive. Yeah. Our former uh, um, Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Carlson, at one of his homilies said, if you want to change your life, read five verses of Mark every day, Mark being the pithiest of the Gospels, and you will change your life. Uh, that's that's quite a statement. So true, but the question we have to start out if we want to cure our blindness is: Do we want to change our life? Uh, you know, the yeah, evil one's there gonna, you go. The evil one's going to say your your life is great. I mean, 
my life before I walked with Christ was great. I, I had professional success. I, I, I love my wife, and I'll be darned, despite every, everything about me, she loved me back. <laughs> and, and, and things were really, really good in my life. There was absolutely no, praise be to God, there was absolutely no tragedy in my life that caused me to turn to him. Yeah. But he let me know, because I had reflection, that there was an emptiness there, mm -hmm. an emptiness that could only be fully fi filled and me be fully awake and alive and be able to see as Jesus sees by going into Scripture. So for insight, as we're getting into insight, uh, let's think about that. And you say, well, I don't know, I don't know much about, you know, I, I just don't know much about uh, the Word of God, and, and I'm kind of scared that it might change me. I kind of like what I'm, where I'm at. Uh, well, then it's time to dive back into reflection a little more because, because as much as I saw how blessed I was, I saw how God had walked with me and had cared for me and held me in the palm of his hand. And from that spot, I said, I would like to do your will. And that's where hindsight gets us into insight. So can, can I ask you, uh, Peter, if you, if we're going to talk about, we're, we're going to talk about how that works in the world when we talk about, uh, when we talk about the blind man, right. the blind man in John 9, uh, the, the, Jesus is just walking around and he sees a blind man, a blind beggar. They're all over the place, by the way. Right. And he sees this blind beggar. And, and the, the, his disciples actually bring this beggar to his attention. And they say, did this man sin or did his parents sin? And Jesus says something to the effect, I'm not going to quote it because it goes on and on, but he says something to the effect of, no, this man didn't sin. or his, He's not blind because of that or because of his family. It's because the light of the world can be seen it's so that I can come into the world and see that. And then he does something very interesting. Do you recall what he does next with this with this guy who's blind? There's two. There's a couple of three blind men stories in there. Is that okay. where he he spits in, in in the mud, or is that a different one? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah you got it. And and takes this little paste and puts it on his eyes. Oh yeah. And then yeah, I think I think uh, uh, what does he what does he do next? Which is really provocative when you think about it. He he tells the blind man to do what. I thought he asked him if he could see anything, but then it, doesn't he send him off to this to a pool, the pool of Solomon, to to wash his eyes? Yes, yes. The pool to be sent to that pool means to be sent in itself, like sent, sent. And so he sends him to the pool to be washed. But think about this: you're a blind guy. You're sitting on the side of the road. You're doing your only profession you have, which is, by the way, I'm totally walled in here. I'm I, and, and I'm I'm asking for help from people. I'm asking for help from everybody. Lo and behold, I didn't even ask for Jesus to help me. This guy comes out of nowhere. He's talking about me in the third person to his disciples. He puts dirt on my eyes, which I'm okay with because I can't see anything <laughs> yeah, anyway. Right? And then he tells me to wander off to this pool of Solomon, which means I'm going to have to ask people how to get there if I don't remember, which I got a good memory, but I don't remember all of it. And I'm going to bump into things all along the way, and then I'm going to trust in him that for some reason, other than the fact that I don't like dirt on my face, I'm going to, I'm going to wash. Isn't that, isn't that a marvelous thing? Yeah. Now, could he have, would he have done that if I, you know, just Deacon Burke or, or, or Peter had walked up and said, hey, look, I'm going to throw some dirt on you, and then I'm going to go tell you to wash. What do you think his attitude to me would have been? Disbelief, incredulity, uh, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be registering. Absolutely. But, but, but he came into the presence of Jesus. Jesus brought him into his presence. And from that spot, from that place where we've already gotten through our reflection, from that spot, he got some insight already before he could even see with his eyes. Yeah, and... As you're saying, he, he Jesus sent him, right? But if I'm thinking of a blind man, me, I'm not talking about Jesus, right? Jesus has a better idea. He knows what we need. But the blind man, I would be taking him by his elbow and directing him step by step on how to get to the pool of Solomon, wherever that might be. But apparently Jesus knew what he needed at that particular point in time, and he needed to have some faith, I guess, he, Jesus sent him on his own to go and wash. 
and he had to have faith that that was meaningful, that that would, one, he could get there, and two, it would make a difference. And here's the great news about seeking to, be, to have sight, is that Jesus gave him that faith. Uh-huh. It wasn't that he had to do it all on his own. Right. Jesus said, I will, when I send you, I will give you the grace to go. Right. And so he sent him to wash his, his face. He washed his eyes. He could see. Kind of. You know, he actually, this in, in this one, he actually oh, okay. can see, yeah. right? So he can see, and he comes back, and Jesus is gone. Jesus went on his merry way. So he goes in front of the, to, to, in front of the Sanhedrin because they bring him in there because everybody knows this guy's eyes have been, been healed. And they say, who healed your eyes? And he goes, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't have a clue. <laughs> you know, I just, this guy healed my eyes. And they go, well, we kind of know who it is, and he's a big, he's a big fat sinner. Uh, get out of here. So he brings his folks in, and they go, who was, who was, this is just a farce, right? You're, right? He really could see, and they go, well, no, no, nah, he's been blind since birth. He hasn't seen a darn thing, and now he can see. And they go, well, well, who did this? And she goes, and they all go, the two parents go, we, we don't know. Ask our son. That's their way of saying, don't kick us out of the temple because uh, we already know right. that if Jesus is the guy, you're going to kick us out of the temple. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that I go from this Catholic church to another Catholic church. It means that I can no longer do business. Right. I'm ostracized by everybody. My whole community is gone, and I might as well pack up and go with the pagans. Somewhere. There was a real hammer to that question. Big one. So they said, no way, no way. So they bring him back in. Here's the insight part of it, right? And the, the insight by having, a, having our sight renewed. And they say to this guy, and it might be healthy for us to actually go there, but I invite the people listening to, do, to go read John 9, 1. And they say to this guy, tell us what happened again. And he says, I already told you. See, he's getting kind of cocky here because he's seen what the Lord's done for him. And he thinks that he must be pretty special because he's seen what the Lord's done for him. Does it sound like hindsight to you? Yeah, yeah. So then he sees what the Lord's done for him, and they, and, and, and they say, they say, well, who was it? And he says, he says, you don't know who opened my eyes? Don't you know who that would be? You were the head honchos. So they kick him out. But do you know what he was talking about? Do you know what the insight he got there? Mm. What did Jesus say when he first went home to his people in Nazareth, entered into the synagogue, and he said, the Lord has anointed me and sent me to to set captives free, heal the sight of the blind. Right. Right? So where does that come from? Well, in Isaiah, nobody in the Old Testament had their eyes healed from, from birth, had their sight restored. That was a messianic sign. Jesus was going to come. That Jesus that was the Messiah, the Christ, was going to come when we start seeing blind men see. So what he was doing was he was, just, he was throwing Isaiah back at them in that it says, then the eyes of the blind will see, Isaiah 42. Wow. So th- he's saying to him, you don't know who this guy, you ask me who this guy is and you call him a sinner and you don't know. He had the insight to know Isaiah, he knew to know that they knew Isaiah, to know how he had acted on them. And you see where his reflection all this time, maybe listening from afar, because in, in that time and age, they thought if you were sick or infirmed or, or uh, couldn't see, then you must have been a big, fat sinner. I'm so glad that God doesn't treat me that way. Or, or I probably wouldn't be able to speak, I wouldn't be able to hear, and I wouldn't be able to see if I was punished for all my sins. But no, it's all the forbearance and graces that we've had. So there was his hindsight, insight, and, of course, at the end, we see his foresight. Right. How did his foresight come out? And let's finish the story. At the very end of that, John 9, 1, Jesus comes to him again. Wait a second. He comes to him again? Do you know, Jesus didn't come to him because of what he said to the Sanhedrin. Jesus came to him because he wanted his healing to be complete. Uh-huh. And Jesus said, sin no more. He didn't say, come follow me, which was kind of interesting. The guy had his choice, right? Right. But he, but he told him, told him to, he revealed, revealed who he was to him and sin no more. And in that, he was able to know Christ 
and also to sin no more. So through our hindsight, the insights we get from God by resting in Scripture and walking with Christ, we discover who we are, and we also discover our mission. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes when we talk about Bartimaeus. Yeah. But what does that mean for you? Wow. Uh, well, first off, what, what you said with regard to the reply of the blind man to the Sanhedrin is kind of eye-opening for me. I never got that. He, the, the Sanhedrin asked, who cured you? And he answered him with a question, and it, it wasn't, I don't know per se, it was re- referring to scripture, right? So he was saying, you must know who the person was, the office of the person, it must be the Messiah because my eyes have been opened, right? I never got that before. So that's, that's huge uh, insight, <laughs> I guess. For me, so scripture was uh, was the source of his insight. Scripture was the source of his insight. Now, I don't think I answered your question directly. No, I'm just curious as to as to as to if the, you you've kind of answered the question, haven't you? Because it's caused you to think. Yeah. Okay. Notice how just that one scene with the eyes being open of a blind man caused you to think. You know, once you start thinking, acting in the person of a beloved son of God recognizing who you, who you are and how blessed you are, and you start thinking about who you are to God and how you can walk with God, you are going to scare the living daylights out of the devil. Yeah. You are going to be brave beyond your, your human powers. You are going to be fearless because you fear God. All those things are available to you, and it's the last thing the devil wants. So the devil's going to put all kinds of roadblocks up. Let's talk about those just yeah. for a second. They, they want us to close I, our ears. They do, but I'm going to open our ears for a second. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. I'm your host, Peter Karutz, and we are with Deacon Tom Burke, and the name of the program is How to Cure Blindness. We've talked about hindsight, insight. And We're in the... And we're going to talk about foresight. Foresight. Yeah. So just to, just to kind of uh, kind of open the door for us to walk through is 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 to recognize how the evil one wants to shut that door. So let's stick our foot in it for a minute. Let's stick our foot in the door because he wants us to close our ears and he says, "I'm going to make you listen to so many other things in the world, and and so many other fears and so many other." pressures and so many other security-based things that you're not even going to want to go with Jesus because that's going to be a bridge too far. I'm going to, I'm going to have you listen to my voice all the time. And I would challenge you and anybody else who's listening to this today to think about this. How often have we listened to the evil one's voice? And the answer is, I'm listening all the time. I choose to reject it. But he's talking to me all the time. So then I would ask you again, who's more powerful, the devil or God? God. Then who's talking to you more than, than the devil? God. Then why do we choose to say, I don't hear his voice. I don't listen for him. And yet he's trying to speak to us through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came into the world as our Savior and that gives us value and worth, true. But Jesus came into the world so we would know God more than anything else. That's kind of Christology 101. Right. He came into the world so we would know him. So our sin turns us away. Our sin turns us away from God. But God never turns away from us. Unless we turn him away. <clears throat> and, well, and that is that respect that he has for us. We, we have to choose to listen to him. If we choose not to, he'll respect that too. Uh, And you're talking about uh, listening to the devil or listening to God. Devil doesn't have any power unless we give it to him. So our our turning to God and actively listening and welcoming his word and his grace is effectively taking power away from the devil as well. Exactly. So so let's let's say from that insight, from that insight, and where where do we where are we affirmed in the insight? We're affirmed in the insight by. Just even scripture, I would, I would invite you to go to, to uh, Psalm 139 and to spend some time in one, Psalm 139. This is David's, David's prayer, right? And, and, and we understand that in that, that we were created for a purpose, that God intended us. It, it, says, it says, behind you and before you, encircle me and rest your hand on me. 
I want everybody here today to be to have their eyes opened to the hand that is resting on them, the hand of God that rests on them, the hand of God that, that will always be there, even when I sin. And, and I'm, I'm not a sinner because I do not accept that label. The evil one tells me I'm a sinner and I'm not worthy of the love of God. I tell you I sin. I am a prolific person who sins, but I refuse to accept that moniker. I'd rather accept I'm a beloved son of God. And if I do, from all the great gifts God's given to me, he wouldn't give this to somebody who wasn't a beloved son on it, like, like he wanted me to be, so, then I can live in that. So don't define yourself <clears throat> by your sin. Define yourself by being a child of God. Yeah. Who loved you first? God did. What yeah. came first, the love of God or your sin? Yeah, absolutely. Then he, then he will not take that away, what he has already given right, to you. Right, right. Yeah, I, 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 he, I cannot lose who he is. And since God is love, I cannot lose his love. Right. I can reject it, of course. But he's always going to give it there to me. So we've been talking about, uh, we were talking about uh, insight, and we need to get to foresight. We got about four minutes. And that's all the time it needs. It's all the time it needs. Foresight. How do I see into the future of my life? Well, what did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, come follow me. When, when, when he called Peter, he said to Peter, come follow me. And what did Peter say? Do you remember? Uh, he, I, I'm putting you on the spot. All right. Uh, is it, uh, leave me, Lord, yeah, I'm a sinner? Yeah, exactly. Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinner. And you know what Jesus said? He didn't say, you big fat sinner. I know you're a big fat sinner. <laughs> you told he me said, something I didn't know. Yeah, he said, he said, come, and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me. Over and over again, what we found out is our, is, and that's the gift to, on, on Father's Day here, is if you want to walk your children into heaven, then then cure your blindness through hindsight, insight, and foresight. What do I'm talking about? Uh, I will discover who I am if I walk with Jesus. I will discover how to walk if I walk with Jesus. I will declare, as, as Jeremiah says, I will, uh, excuse me, as Joshua says, as for me and mine, I, my, my house will follow God. As for me and mine, as for me and my household, we will, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. Okay. And and from that spot, we still have our challenges, right? From from our our challenges. But if you are the spiritual father you like to be, then become the disciple you were made to be, and that's just recognizing how beloved you are, yeah. and showing your children that way too. Because that's Jesus' way. And as we talk about Father's Day, this is your call. That is part of being father and husband, is to lead your family in faith. And it's tough to lead people if you don't know where to go. So we need to build our, we men need to be, build ourselves up from a, from a spiritual standpoint. You, you mentioned something earlier, adoration. And you had a big smile on your face when you said adoration. I don't know if everyone could understand how great adoration is. It's that opportunity to be quiet and listen to God speaking to us. Exactly. And, and, and think about this. Uh, Peter says this in uh, uh, 1, 1 Peter 3.15. He says, he says this. My favorite verse. Is it yours? It and is my and favorite verse. Then say it. It says, always be prepared. Uh, always be prepared with an answer um, Oh, now I can't remember it. Always be the, ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for the reason for your, for your hope. Right? For your hope. That's our right. hope is in Christ. There our, you go. We now just cured our blindness. That's right. We cured our blindness. You have. We have squandered away an hour, but you know what? A good squandering, right? Waste time with God, and yeah. you have done it today. We know how to cure blindness through hindsight, insight, and foresight. Come back and join us next week, please. And tell a friend, if you would like a copy of this program, call us, 636-447-6000, 636-447-6000. And share the good news of this good word. Pray. You've been
on listening to St. Joseph Radio Presents from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. If you would like to join us in our evangelization efforts, you can order a copy of today's broadcast or any of our past programs by visiting us on our website, stjosephradio.net. That's S-A-I-N-T, josephradio.net. Or call us, 636-447-6000. It's all at your fingertips to help us evangelize the world, bringing the good news of Christ to everyone you meet and change one soul at a time. Thank you for your prayers and support. Until next time, may God bless you and your family. This has been a presentation of St. Joseph Radio Presents. Well, that was it. Uh, quite a program. How to Cure Blindness. I think I, I think I see the path now. Yes. <laughs> the way, the truth, and the life of Christ is, is, is the path. Yes. You know, uh, uh, so many things cause us to be blind that we don't even know about. Our, our lives pull in, pull in, pull in, and that ray of light that God wants us to know, that's the ray of his love. And when that love comes into us and we recognize how much we've been loved for so long, then all of a sudden, through that hindsight and reflection, then we have the insight to know who we are to God and the foresight to know that that's our path always to be with him. Isn't that it's great? It's shocking and encouraging. It is great. Yeah. Tell a friend about this. We'll see you soon. God bless.